Welcome back to the REI Marketing Weekly. It's your host, Josh Culler. And on this episode, we've got a hot topic going on. I just dropped my, my shoe. That's what that sound was, so I apologize. <laughs> but um, I've got a hot topic going on right now, which is basically being able to run your real estate investing business from home. Um, so we are, yes, we are recording this while I'm quarantined at home um, during this whole week of the coronavirus like fiasco going on. Um, but I read an interesting post from my guests that I have on the show right now, which I'll just say, Christian Marn. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Good, bro. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Just hanging in there. Um, I'm, ha I'm happy to have you on the show for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, super cool guy here um, out of Florida. And he posted on Facebook. And it was very interesting to me. As soon as he posted it, it kind of sparked my thought. And I was like, you know what? I need to start loading up some guests on my show to talk about how they can market and run their real estate business from home, but still close deals, right? Without having to be out. So he posts on Facebook and this is word for word what he said. So, and, and this is really interesting to me. So he said, today is the first official day. My entire team is working from home for the unknown near future. And we already locked up a deal. My team has been buying over the phone for three years now. So locking up contracts isn't my worry about the business continuing to thrive. However, I know plenty of other investors freaking out right now which is extremely true, right, Christian? <laughs> oh, yeah. and, then, uh, and then he continues and says, this is a perfect time to get out of your comfort zone and evolve in your business. Trust me, closing over the phone is actually easier than you think. And I 100% agree because I've done it. And I'm actually thinking of doing a live webinar and uh, going over your phone script and breaking it down uh, and, and each step that you do to close the property. So this is very interesting to me. Um, number one is because I've done virtual wholesaling before. Um, we actually, uh, me and the, the guy I was running with Gary Harper and we were buying and selling in Michigan and we did 70 properties our first year, just completely virtual. Wow. That's and awesome. that was, it was, it was easy, but it was also in a day and age where the internet wasn't as like dominating as it is right now. I mean, we were still doing, you know, mailers and stuff like that, but Christian, I do want to talk about kind of the marketing side of things that you're doing in order to be able to actually bring those leads in the door and then a little bit of your process because we all know that sales and marketing can cross over a lot of times. So maybe not the, the bigger sales picture and we might seep into that, but how you're able to actually close these deals over the phone. You say you've been doing it for three years. So we want to dip into that secret sauce and figure out what's going on here. But before you get into it, I do want you to introduce yourself. So who you are, what you do, how long you've been doing all that. Give us a little bit of the origin story of Christian. So go ahead and do that. <laughs> All right. Well, my name is Christian Marin. Uh, I live in Orlando, Florida. I was born in Medellin, Colombia. I lived there till I was seven years old. Um, then my family kind of got persecuted by Pablo and some other drug dealers. So uh, we moved uh, to Jersey. Grew up in North Jersey, Patterson, New Jersey, to be exact. I uh, lived there until about mid-teens. Then my mom and my grandparents were tired of the cold, so we moved down to the Orlando area. <laughs> Been here ever since. Uh, I got out of school, didn't really know what to do. Went into the fire academy, became a firefighter, paramedic. Did that for 12 years. Uh, in 2008, when the economy crashed, we stopped getting raises, stopped getting, you know, everything that was kind of promised to us in our contract for per our union and that kind of got me got me kind of thinking like man I, i've been going through this my whole life with hey go to school get good grades you know get a job and you'll be secure and i was like this isn't really working out for me um i then when <laughs> ran into somehow i stumbled onto rich dad poor dad uh -huh. read that book, completely changed my mindset. And I was like, okay, well, everything I've known my whole life has kind of been a lie. This is, this is not the way it's going to work. Got, fell in love with real estate. I was like, okay, I know I'm meant to be a multimillionaire. Like I just mm -hmm. feel it in my soul. Um, and I'm, this is how I'm going to do it. So for the next two years, I tried everything I could to find, get a deal, get financing, do a flip, anything. But you know, I, I, I came from an immigrant family. My family was all immigrated from Colombia. So they didn't really have a lot of money trying to explain to an older Hispanic uh, family that, you know, hey, take out, you know, a mortgage 
on your house and I'll pay it for you so I can flip a house and renovate it. It was pretty much like talking Chinese to them. Yeah. They looked at me like I was crazy. So that didn't work. So all the little avenues that people were like, Hey, talk to your friends, family, this, ask for money. Like it just didn't work for me, but I knew I wanted to do it. So I kept going, kept working, kept working at it. Eventually I got my real estate license, tried the re regular real estate route and I absolutely hated it. <laughs> I, it was just not for me. I wanted to do investments. I stumbled onto a company who ended up being a wholesale company here in Orlando uh, and was the biggest one at the time. I started working for them first as a dispo uh, rep, and then I moved over to acquisitions. And all we did was acquire straight properties on the MLS. So I did that, um, made a ton of money, loved it. But as the economy started getting back up, this was now around 2015, mm -hmm. um, I, went, I started noticing that it was just getting harder and harder to get deals on the MLS. Mm -hmm. I stumbled onto Sean Terry's coaching program for wholesaling, went through it, started marketing, sending out direct mails constantly, and started getting deals. And from there, I just started getting deals, started doing my own thing. And eventually I, I started, I broke off, started my own company in 2017. And in 2017, we did $300,000 in revenue. 2018, awesome. we did 1.4 million. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> 2019 was, was a completely different year. It was, was a very hard, but learning year. My whole team quit. I had to learn how to hire new people, how to manage, how to train salespeople. I parted ways with my two partners. Uh, and in the midst of all of that, we still ended up grossing uh, around $800,000. Awesome. So yeah. uh, that showed me that my process and my, my systems were, were very good. I just had a missing link. Uh, and then uh, this year we started with a brand new team, everything. So yeah, been doing good. Yeah, absolutely. Man, what a, what a history going on here. Uh, <laughs> a good book will be coming out by Christian here pretty soon. Um, yeah. So I want to talk about, yeah, obviously like th there's there, you've been through a lot. You've been on the acquisition side um, of things and, and previous, you know, um, relationships you've had with other businesses and whatnot. But I do want to talk about this whole um, being able to close over the phone, like in your in your pajamas on the couch watching the office type thing, right? Like that's the stuff we want to talk about because that's kind of what's going on right now, right? I mean, we're, we're in a midst, whatever you guys are listening to this show, um, we're in a midst right now of people being afraid to go out. Um, I, I've, I'm a part of very many real estate investing groups and a lot of people are talking about how um, sellers are canceling appointments and that kind of thing. And that yeah, can really cripple a real estate investing business. But if you run your business more virtually, um, then you might be able to get some more with it. So let's talk about the marketing that you're doing in order to bring leads through the door. And then we'll go into transitioning on the last half of the show here. Um, we'll go into transitioning into how you're able to actually close these people over the phone and building rapport with them and, and then getting that deal through, um, through the, all the way through the closing table. So what, what yeah. kind of marketing are you doing right now in order to bring the leads in um, for you guys? So we, we have different marketing channels, but our main one is direct mail. Uh, cold calling and uh, SMS. I have done PPC. Uh, I currently turned it off and I have done RVMs. Not really a big fan of them, but th those are the main three channels that we're doing right now to, to bring in leads. Right. Absolutely. So then like between those three, which ones are bringing in the most results or is it pretty evenly spread? You know, it just fl it fluctuates between direct mail and cold calling. It really does. Uh, some months direct mail will, will crush it. Other months cold calling will absolutely be the best, the best uh, marketing channel. Yeah. It, it just, everything that's, that's why you have to have multiple marketing channels, not just right. one because it, the, it, so towards the end of the year, direct mail outperforms cold calling so much. And the reason for that is because Towards the end, around Q4, towards the end of the year, people start wanting to sell their properties before the end of the year so they can get that money in or claim it for taxes. A lot of buyers are buying at that time so they can um, not have to pay as much taxes on income that they have. And yeah. direct mail, just it, just it just blows up. But around the summertime, cold calling really, really spikes up, uh, spikes up for us. 
Interesting. That's pretty, do you, do you have an understanding of why that is or just something that happens? <laughs> I, you know, I honestly don't know why that is around why it spikes up in the summer, but it just, it just, it, for two years, it has Crazy. been increasingly better and better during the summer. I think, I think it's probably because most people do sell around the summertime, you know, school, school Less busy. is out. Huh? Yeah. Less busy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, when we get in touch with them because we reach more people through cold calling than direct mail. So when mm -hmm. we actually get in touch with them, they're, they're in the mindset of, Oh yeah, this is a perfect time because we, we do market to a lot of absentee owners and people that don't live in their houses. But a lot of them do have tenants in place. Yeah. So we've actually had people around springtime tell us, Oh, well, I don't want to kick my, I don't want to sell until the summer time because my tenants have kids and I don't want them to have to change schools. So a lot of the mm. sellers are cautious, conscious of the school year. And I, I, I would say that that would be the reasoning why, because in the summer we're able to, re through cold calling, we're able to reach more people than we do with direct mail. And now people are like, yeah, this is a good time to sell so that if I, my tenants have to leave, they're, they're okay and they can go find other places. A lot of tenants too also do leave around the summertime too is when they have their leases because now they want to move to a different district or anything. And then, so that's perfect time for them to find a new rental. So a lot of times that's my theory as to why yeah. I believe it. I just, I just think that that pair of people are moving. So it makes a perfect time for them to sell it. I, I completely agree. And the reason why I do is I, I tell people this all the time. Like a lot of times your target demographic when you're doing acquisitions, marketing is going to be those, later in the years, middle age, um, you know, age group or the elderly, right? So typically mm -hmm. it's going to be your 40 plus, right? So 40, between 40 and 70 years old, that's going to be kind of your target range when it comes to age demographic of acquiring a house because a millennial that buys a house right now, they're not going to be living in it for 40 years at this point where they could just like <laughs> sell it, right? Um, or, or it's paid off and then they can sell it. Cause a lot of times that's what happens. You know, you may go into pre foreclosure and all that, but, um, when it comes down to it, the, the understanding of your audience is extremely important for this reason because of what you just said. I, I completely agree with that. That's why I responded with it's less busy, but it's also the fact of like they are able to make moves during the summer that they would not be able to during the school years, um, during winter, especially, and especially like, I know you guys don't get winters down there and, but you know, winter because you grew up in Jersey. Uh -huh. Um, but like, like, around here at least where i live in, in northwest indiana chicagoland area like you're not you're, you're almost doing nothing during the winter right like there's nothing that's going on during the winter because it's so damn cold like it's so that is something that you guys got to take into consideration when you're um trying to figure out what marketing to do so so in that case christian do you guys ramp up your marketing around the spring in order to get those results for the summer so how do, do you guys yeah. do it that way yeah, so uh, starting around Q2, I'll start ramping up marketing. And then uh, the beginning of Q4, I start ramping up marketing a lot more. Yeah. So, and the thing is, even with, with Q4, you got to be cautious. You're going to get the bulk of your leads in around October and November. Mm. Because what ends up happening is, you know, most people, 30 days out is when they're going to close. So pro in December, you really only have about two weeks of of people interested in selling because what ends up happening is the first two weeks of December, you're, you're still going to get traction. People are ready to close after two weeks. They're going to, the last two weeks is, is, is holiday time. So they're not even going to yeah. pay attention. They're not going to no, want to no. the, the people in the beginning of December are going to call you and they're going to be like, Hey, I want to list it. I want to list it. I want to sell it. Not list. It. I want to sell it to you because, uh, it, but I want to close before the end of the year. Right. After two, after December 15, uh, at that point, most people start realizing that, hey, I'm not going to be able to close this by the end of the year. I'll just hold off until next year. Yeah. Yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah. So that's something to take into consideration. I know, I know a lot of people, they just throw direct mail out there. They just throw out um, all their cold callers, text message marketing and all that stuff. They throw it out there year round without any strategy. But if you truly want to make a dent in the results um, that you're going to get from your, and, and the biggest bank, get the biggest bang for your buck in your marketing, you've got to take these things in consideration. It's not just a matter of clicking a button and sending out a mass, you know, hundred thousand mail piece um, campaign. Like you, you've got to think about it in these manners that Christian is and which causes the, the effect of like 
um, hitting them at the right moment. <laughs> and that's what, that's, what's extremely important. Um, so I want to transition the last half of this call. We got like five, six minutes that we, we could talk about this, but how you guys are able to close over the phone. You've been doing this for three years. Um, you just got a, a contract locked down this week. And this is a time where people need to learn how to be able to do their business from home without having to meet with the sellers. Now, I know you're going to have investors out there that are like, no, I'm always belly to belly going to make this happen. Um, and I get that. But then when you have, and, and I know that this whole coronavirus thing, this is an anomaly, right? This does not <laughs> happen very often. Uh, but at the same time, this could be that time where you decide, hey, I really, truly love doing this business at home. And this could work where I don't have to go out places because it's much more scalable if you can do it from home or from the office or whatever you, whatever you want to do, regardless of the fact not going out to the sellers or going out and driving for dollars and that kind of thing. Um, so when it comes to closing over the phone, uh, now we're, again, we're going to be le leaking into the sales process a little bit. What, what kind of structure do you guys have? Do you have scripts? How does that work in order to, to close deals over the phone like that? Yeah, so we have a script that my team follows. Uh, and the, the biggest thing about closing over the phone versus closing in person is just asking questions. Okay. So, and building rapport. So when we start, we first set the stage. You know, it's, hey, you know, uh, I'm a real estate investor. We're going to go ahead and ask you a couple of questions. Uh, once, once you give us that, we can then give you an offer. But we don't buy every single property that we run across. Uh, so if we don't, if we don't fit your criteria, you don't fit ours. We do have a team of realtors, different, different exit strategies that we set it up. After that, the most important thing to do is ask them questions about the condition of the house. You, you got to know what the condition of the roof is, the, the plumbing, the electrical and the AC. Those are your main four points. After that, it's just asking them, kind of like having them give you a walk through the house. Well, have you updated the kitchen? Have you done any updates to the bathroom? Have you painted? Is there any damage to it? And one thing we do tell them is we say, now, please be honest with us because this is how we're going to assess the property. Once we get it on the contract and we go see the property, if the property doesn't meet our criteria and there's different things that you didn't disclose to us at this conversation, then we're going to have to readjust our offer and we don't want to do that. And yeah. that gets the seller into the mindset of being honest with you yeah. because now they're not going to lie to you because they know you're going to go to the house and see these things. And then the price is going to be readjusted and they're going to look bad and people don't want to look bad. Yeah. So another thing that does that, that gets the conversation open that lets them start talking to you about the current condition of the house. And they're still telling you, yeah, the tenant hasn't paid this, this, you know, it needs repairs here, but I can't do it. Or oh, I'm a hoarder. There's, I'm sorry. You know, I feel so embarrassed. And that's how you start building rapport, right? It's like right. what investors would do in a walkthrough of the house. We do is do it over the phone. It's the yeah. same exact thing. Now people tell us all the, sometimes we get these questions like, Hey, well, how can you buy the property? If we don't see it a simple answer look we buy we buy multiple houses per month we just don't have the time to go see every single one so what we do is we negotiate it on a price once you agree on a price with us we'll then send third-party people to go take pictures video see it and we'll do an inspection on it so we're still going to do the same things we're still going to see the house before we buy it we're just doing all the conversation up front so we don't have to waste your time and you don't waste our time yeah, because, and, and what people don't understand is the fact that like, you know, when you're getting a property like this, especially a wholesale deal, um, the numbers are what drives the deal. And mm -hmm. you can analyze all of that and leave some compensation room on the front end when you're doing this, this initial walkthrough, virtual walkthrough with the seller on the phone. And then if the numbers work, if everything comes to par, then you spend the time to go out and visit the property. And that's a great way to do it. It's so efficient and it allows you to be able to um, not waste time. <laughs> that's a big thing, right? Especially if it, it depends on how many you know, properties you're looking at too. Like if you're, if you're only getting you know, a small amount of leads and people actually on the phone, then maybe you want to go look at every property. But if you're looking to do a little bit of a higher volume, then you definitely want to make sure you're as efficient as possible. And this is a way to do it. So you're literally not even, you know, making belly to belly contact with the seller until you're you've already vet the deal and it works 
but now you're actually just confirming that the deal works, right? <laughs> yeah. So that, that's exactly what it comes across. Um, so do you seem to have a pretty high conversion rate when it comes to, I, I mean, I don't know, have you, have you, do you do any kind of comparison between selling on the phone and then selling on person? Like obviously selling, but like on the phone with the seller from the initial start, or do you guys uh, all do all on the phone? We do all on the phone. Yeah. We do all on the phone. So I don't know. I haven't, comp I haven't compared it. Sure. Over the person. sure. Well, I, I'll just tell you guys right now it's, it works. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope we don't need to go into that, but um, I think that's, I think that that's a great way to run, especially a wholesale business. And, and so the last thing that I want to hit here, we got like two minutes and I got to wrap this up for you. Um, the last thing I want to hit here is on the disposition side um, being virtual. How do you guys handle that whole process? Like, cause, cause these are all wholesale deals mm -hmm. um, that you're doing. So on the dispo side, when it comes down to it, um, do you guys, you guys just email market out and you blast it out to your buyers list or how does that all work for you guys? So dispo side actually is easier than the acquisition side. Always. <laughs> always. So everything, everything's done uh, virtually. Uh, we, we email blast it, we text blast it, we post it on Facebook, we post it on Craigslist, we post it in multiple different areas just to get um, eyes on it. Mm -hmm. But one of the main things is understanding your market and actually learning it. We know our markets very well. We know what, buyer, what buyers are wanting to buy, what numbers look like. So when we send a property out, we price it actually at a, at a price that is very attractive to investors we don't try and squeeze every single thing so like i have a minimum um return that all our deals need to meet before we send it out hmm. and that's key in knowing your knowing your market knowing your numbers like how much how much return are investors looking for when they flip right most investors are looking for like a 15 to 20 percent net profit mm -hmm. So uh, some, in some markets, they go down as low as 12, 10%. So understanding that part lets you mark, market your properties properly. So when we put them out, we get flooded with calls and people are like, I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. What I do then is I've trained my dispositions team to build urgency and build a com competition and get these buyers to not want to get to the show. It's like, okay, great, you wanna see it. Well, we're gonna have a group showing. There's gonna be about 10 people, 15 people there. And once everybody sees it, then we're gonna take all offers. Most investors are like, no, I want it now. Okay, well, if you want it now, you can pay above asking. Oh, we'll yeah. <laughs> so we actually get um, a lot of our offers are, most of our deals are sold sight on scene. Yeah. Uh, they don't go see it and they usually pay at asking or above asking for it. Mm -hmm. And, but what we do provide is we do provide pictures. We do provide video to all our investors. So whenever we go take pictures, we do a video walkthrough of the entire house. So they're, they pretty much see everything except for physically walking through it. Now, a lot of the newbies and smaller investors that have only done a few deals are like, Oh no, I got to see it. I got to see it. Yeah. But once you start growing your list and you have a lot of big players, they're like, that's good here's the check, you know, here's the contract. Yeah. You give me everything I need to see. The numbers work perfectly for me. And here, I'll even pay you more because I just, I like this property and I need it. So, okay. So something I want to hit and I want to wrap this up here, but something I, I really, really want to hit that I've been like itching to say this entire, like last two minutes of you explaining this and, and it's just building it up. So you have to understand the value of buying the property right on the front end. And what people, a lot of people like just in business in general, not just real estate, but what people understand is that a lot of times just having a good product that brings enough value is your best marketing source. Um, so by getting the deal at the right price, now you're able to just throw the numbers out there. Like you said, you throw the numbers out there with the marketing, you get some of the pictures, the walkthroughs and, and that kind of thing. And people are literally just literally, they're ready to jump on it because the, it make, the deal makes sense. And that is some of your best marketing. But the reason why that trickles down into even further is, is the fact that like when investors see that you can repetitively get these deals at a good price and give the right numbers and sell it at the right price, um, that's that marketing right there that you're doing. I know it seems like sales, but it's marketing. Mm -hmm. That 
will create some rapport with future buyers because they know that you're getting the deals at the right price. So then when you do push it out, they're more likely to say, oh, Christian, just push out another deal. Make sure you check that out. And they're telling their acquisitions team to go check that out and make sure that they get on top of it before it goes. So that is, I, I like that a lot, the way you guys do that. I, I agree. I know a lot of people are like, they don't want to get into the bidding wars and that kind of thing, but that, that works for some people. It doesn't work for others, right? So you've got to pick and choose what works for you. And for yeah. Christian, I mean, obviously this does work. Well, so, we don't do a bidding war. We don't do a bidding war. We just take the highest offer. We don't highest tell, offer. Okay, gotcha. We don't tell anybody what the offer is. We don't tell them gotcha. anything. So it's not like people are like throwing out numbers. You're just, you take all the offers and then the highest offer gets it. Yep. Just tell me what your offer is. And it, you know, it can be below asking. It can be at asking. It can be above asking. We, yeah. my, my dispositions team doesn't even know what each other's offers are. Only I know. And gotcha. I don't know um, who's, who's winning or where they're at. I'm just like, okay, thanks. And uh, I'll let you know who, who gets, who gets the uh, winning, who mm -hmm. gets the offer accepted. Mm -hmm. And so that's the difference between the way I do it versus an actual bidding war because I'm not bidding anybody else. Makes sense. You feel that you look at the property and you're like, man, that's too much for me. This is what I'm offering. I'll mm -hmm. take your offer. And, you, yeah. and I've had, I've actually had deals where below asking was the best offer. Sometimes it's not even about the price. Sometimes about, I also take terms into account, right? So like yeah. if, if it's cash versus hard money, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll take cash yeah. over hard money. Other times if you're using my hard money, then I'll take, of course, I'll take it. Yeah, over. I'll take my hard money. <laughs> yeah, if you're using my company to get hard money, then of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose it over the other ones. Yeah. So it's just different things like that. That makes sense. I, I, I really, really like that. No, I, I'm glad you pieced that together for me. So um, man, that was great stuff. I appreciate you sharing and laying out everything that you guys do. I think this is, uh, this is very valuable and could help a lot of people that are possibly stuck inside of their house right now, not being able to go and they're getting, you know, appointments canceled left and right. Um, so make sure you guys take a lot of this into consideration and make sure you're, um, you know, leveraging technology, leveraging systems and processes in order to get your marketing running like a well-oiled machine. And then it flows into that sales process, just like the same machine that the marketing's on. And then um, on the disposition side, going back into the marketing after sales. So Christian, dude, I appreciate you sharing everything that you have today. I want to give you the opportunity to um, allow people to contact you if they have any questions. I know you mentioned on your Facebook post that you may do a webinar, uh, but if somebody had more questions about this, this process that you have going, going on, um, what would be the best way to get in contact with you? Was it Facebook, email, phone, whatever you want to give out? Uh, it would be Facebook or Instagram. You can okay. find Find me on Instagram at Christian Marin underscore official um, and or Facebook. My Facebook name is Christian Marcel Marin. Awesome. And guys, I'll have that link below as always. So make sure you check out in the description of this video. I keep shaking all this stuff. Um, make sure you check out in the description of the video. I'll have linked the Instagram and Facebook that Christian gave out so you guys can connect directly with him. So make sure that you get with him and tell him that Josh sent you and Hopefully he'll take care of you guys. I'm sure he will. Uh, but Christian, dude, I appreciate you being on the show, man. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I know we went a little over time, so I apologize, but thank you for um, being willing to carve some time out of your uh, quarantine days right now. <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to having you back, man. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Sounds good. Well, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode of the REI Marketing Weekly. Appreciate you jumping on and joining. If you are listening on the podcast, make sure you head over to Apple Podcasts. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, give it a five-star review. I'd appreciate that and some feedback. And then if you're on the newsletter, make sure you subscribe to the podcast as well. But if you're in the newsletter, make sure you go back into the newsletter and check out the rest of the content that's going down. A lot of great information. Um, and then Another thing that I haven't told you guys yet, but uh, the official platform for REI.video is out. It is officially out. And if you use coupon code um, first, first vid, first vid, then you will get 50% off your first order that you have there. So basically this platform is meant for you be able to shoot your own videos. So whether that's testimonial videos, walkthroughs, um, what videos for your website, for social media, whatever it is, ad videos, shoot your own videos with your cell phone, your camera, whatever, send it over to rei.video. Our team will edit it and then send it right back to you. And Christian was actually one of our beta testers for this platform. We edited a vlog for you already and looking for some more coming our way, but <laughs> it's good, man. <laughs> so anyway, you guys make sure you head over there, rei.video, type that in your web browser and you'll find it there. Thank you guys for listening and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.